There he is. What is going on, Julian Marquez? Congrats on your big win this past Saturday. Thanks, brother. Man, how have you been? It's been a minute since I've been seeing you, been talking to you guys. How's everything going over there? Things are going all right, but nowhere near as good for us as for you. What a weekend. I mean, that was a great fight. You guys went back and forth, and then in the end, not only did you win, you got your hand raised, which is obviously the goal. You got the finish. You got some mic time that you took advantage of. You pushed the company products, and then you got yourself a Valentine. Holy cow. Ticking all the boxes. Look, you know, my last July 6, 2018, I had a trifecta of negative energy that came towards me. Uh, missed weight, arm ripped off the bone, lost a controversial decision. My heart was broken for 31 months, and I came back and took full advantage. I'm literally top of the world. I feel happy. I feel great, and I'm just excited to be here, man. All right, cool. Now, the first thing we need to do with that 50G is update your – Upgrade your phone, or is the Wi-Fi at Gloria MMA, do they need to update the speed over there? Yeah, uh, it could be the Wi-Fi. I'm at the gym. I'm, I'm at practice right now with my team. Um, I, there's a little girl that ran by. It sucks. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, I think it might be also on iPhone 10. May, I might need to upgrade. I need to move it up. Am I choppy? It is a little choppy, but we can hear you, so we can power through. And by the way, tip of the hat, man, when I was talking to you over the weekend, just trying to give you my congratulations on that long and, you know, that, that was a horrific 31 months that you went through with the injuries, the, the setbacks, the fights falling apart, and then finally getting in there. And you told me you were going to be at practice today. I was like, what is, what's going on with this guy? But that just shows you the dedication, man. Pay it off. Yeah, man, uh, uh, you know, this team has helped me out in the past 10 months and helped build me and you know, this win isn't just myself. This win is the entire team. And, you know, we can celebrate over the weekend, but Monday is business. Monday is back with the team. And we definitely have uh, the opportunity to celebrate it together and with our first practice after the fight. You know, that's how I have to be here. Julian, that team has a, a big reputation for the hard work and the commitment. And I know a lot of it goes to James Kraus, but I don't want you to get lost in the fact that you also put in some work, even outside of Glory MMA, it's not just the team. You actually really, really put it all out there, man, and dedicate, dedicated yourself to the comeback. Never gave up on yourself on those huge setbacks, and and uh, you know you you followed all of the instructions. And and uh, I mean th that how how was that to see that pay off for you? I, I know you were emotional Saturday, but if you had a a chance to like really, really think about that long 31 months? Man, it, it, it's huge. It, it means a whole bunch to me. Like, you know, 31 months, like we even talked a lot during that time, you know, like we have a good connection. Um, there's a bunch of highs and lows in it. And to finally be able to come here and get that win and the way I got the win and how I got the win and what I showed during that win and what I showed during that fight, you know, it just shows who I am, and it shows everybody this is where I want to be, and there's nothing. But you're going to have to kill me to get me out of there. And I'm only getting better little by little. I'm getting more and more, you know, educated. My fight IQ is getting stronger, and I'm becoming more of a mixed martial artist. You know, this weekend, it was a very, it was a very wild weekend, you know. Like, it was a very wild fight. I, I faced the best Maki Pitolo that the UFC has ever seen. I brought the best out of him. And even then, I found a way to win. Julian, like George stated, it's been a long time to, since you fought. But when you came back, everything's been different, right? COVID, no fans, all the different protocols you have to go through. Did that almost make things easier? Or was it just crazy weird when you went into the cage? Like, what was that feeling like? The, the, it felt completely normal. You remember, I fought on the Contender Series season one, so I had that same exact, you know, that feeling where there wasn't a lot of people in the building. You know, it, it literally felt the same exact that uh, as that night um, back in August first, twenty seventeen. It it didn't. I think COVID just like helped me uh, build myself more and focus on myself. Whereas prior to COVID, I was sitting there working 40, 50 hours a week trying to make ends meet at a serving job. And it just didn't, it, 
it, it, it didn't match up with my training schedule. It's, it's stressing. Serving is a very difficult job because you have all the negative, um, the negative attributes that come with serving. You have people coming in demanding, treating you like you're their slave, and they tell you all these things about you, where they make you work your butt off, and then they don't like support you in any way, shape, or form, but they talk down to you. Um, and it just, it adds on to you just through repetition day after day after day and keeping that smile. So, you know, the COVID actually helped me focus more on me and focus more on my return, which in turn, it, it helped me out completely. It made me do the right decision of, of coming to a new gym to focus on, you know, my weight, to focus on my um, technique in MMA, to focus on my IQ. Uh, to isolate myself away from just everything and brought me back to my family. So it helped build me up a lot. The fight says a lot about yourself, about your gym. But what was your thoughts at the end of round two when you were sitting on the stool? I know you get your instructions from your coach, but what was actually going through your head when you stood up and round three was beginning? Man, so this is the thing. You got to remember, I haven't been in there for 31 months so that that animal that you saw in the phil haas fight the animal you saw before phil haas the animal you saw that was trying to come out in uh alessio like they were even the Alessio fight the animal tried to come out but he couldn't come out because you know i, I was one arm down when he told me something he would i have a connection with james i've always had it when i was a when i was uh starting out like he was my first uh coach and even in winnipeg you know, my coaches were in the corner and James was in the front row of the fans and I was fighting Darren Stewart. I could hear James coaching me through that fight. And he was the one that was walking me through the get ups and walking me through everything. I couldn't even hear my coaches. So it just puts a testimony to like how the connection of James and I have. And James looked at me and when we made eye contact, looked at each other and he was expressing in just a vulgar way. He was telling me straight up how it is, how I needed to hear it. He spoke to whatever was inside me, that, that, that animal that comes out in the fight, that animal that comes for the win. And he told me this is what it was. And he said, if you don't finish it, then it doesn't fucking count. And that meant all of the hard work that I put in, all of the stress, all of the 31 months of highs and lows, like this is just going to be washed away. No one's going to care. He's like, if it doesn't count. So he spoke to that and I, I honestly, like, I was asleep in that fight. Like, like me, the person you're talking to right now, this amazing, like, character was asleep. But whatever was inside me switched. I've never called James sir. I've never said yes, sir, to him in my entire life. Never said yes, sir. And he's never called me Julian Marquez. If you listen to the fight, something, me and him connected on a different level where we he used my full name. And then I, I, used, I said, yes, sir. Like our two animal instincts, our two fighter instincts, those people came out and spoke to each other. That's very interesting. Look, I've always known you as a very good person. We're all human. At the end of the fight, was there a piece of you? Because you've probably been there at some point. Did you feel bad for Mackie Patolo? Because you said it yourself. That was probably the best version we have ever seen of that guy. He, whatever he did in the gym, his coaches, props to them. That was an animal that showed up at that that night, and it didn't go his way. Did you get a chance to talk to him? Did, did you feel bad for him at all? Look, you know, this is a fight game, man, and it is the toughest thing in the world. No one but a few people reached out to me after I lost on Alessio. No one there. I went to sleep um, in my room, and there was no one around there was no one in the area. There was no one. Everybody went home. Everybody did their own thing. And for 31 months, I slowly drifted away from the fans and friends and everything. I understand what he's going through. This guy put in hard work getting to where he was at. This kid, this, this kid just, he went, he gave it his all. He fought like it was his last fight, like it was on the line. He gave it his all, and he pushed himself beyond his limit and showed a tremendous amount of growth from his first fight in the U.S., even his contender fight, till where he's at now. And it, it's remarkable. And after that fight, I reached out to Eric Nixon because I love Eric. I think Eric's fucking, he's an amazing person. You know, I've worked with him many times. I've talked to him a lot. We just passed time. And I couldn't talk to him during this whole duration of the fight. So I accepted that fight. 
I texted him. I said, hey, man, this is business. I love you. I don't like this, but I love you, and I know what's going to happen. But we're getting a drink after this. And he told me the same thing. Maki reached out to Eric, did all that. Well, I reached out to Eric after the fight. I said, hey, how's Maki doing? Because I can't just message him. You know, I know. And they told me he went to the hospital. Everything's good. He's doing that stuff. Maki ended up uh, making a post, making a post on Instagram saying stuff. And then I reached out to him on Instagram. We're going to end up getting together. And, uh, when I get into Vegas, we're going to get together and go grab some food. And just kind of kick it. It's like, I don't want him to feel like he's left out, man. I, I hate the fact that everyone just forget it forgets about him because he lost like dude he kicked my ass for literally three rounds let's be real i came off and pulled off a, a very high level style submission that was instinctual how my body just went to it and it happened i went there that's how it is but they shouldn't deter away the fact that that kid is phenomenal he's a great human being he's an amazing person an awesome training partner and he has improved drastically from one camp to the next. And it, it hurt to see him not get the love and, and that he should have gotten, not get the, the hype that he should have gotten. It hurts to see that. But at the end of the day, this is business. And it was either his neck on the line or my neck on the line. I'm not playing with that. I, I, I'm going on myself. Yeah, I thought it was maybe up for fight of the night, but because there was only four finishes and six decisions, I think the UFC just said tick, 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 and just went with all the with all the finishes. But yeah, Ma Maki's a extreme couture guy. You've been in there plenty of times, um, so that was great the way you handled it, taking us through it when the fight was signed, communicating, and then not letting what happened to you happen to Patolo by reaching out. That just shows you what a big what a big of a big of a heart you got, Julian, and that's commendable, man. Um, and I want to give some more praise to the people that surround you. Your co-host on Beauty and the Beast, Kendra Lust, man, she was all over Twitter, you know, and I loved how she took us through the fight. And then she was cheering for you to get a bonus and telling her friends and tagging them and, and retweeting, you know, and she's got a huge social media following. But I got to give credit to her. I got to give credit to Kraus, like Go said, between rounds two and three, making that connection, keeping it real, pulling that sixth gear out of you, you know, and then you – uh, accepting that and like you said you you know yes sir and and telling him you heard him because I think he repeated it twice he wanted to make sure that he wasn't messing around and you said yes sir and it was awesome man it was awesome it, it, it was a beautiful fight between you two and and um, I can't say enough about everything that surrounded it all and then of course you grabbed the mic by the way you started down the road of saying KC Chiefs I was like uh oh he got hit too many times because they lost. What's he going to say about the KC Chiefs? But then you started to promote something going on <laughs> with the UFC, and I was like, oh, okay, wow, this guy remembers it all. Like, he, he really read the script. Yeah, man, uh, look, this is the thing. You got you got to handle the questions, man. You got to handle this. You have 15 minutes on that mic. And, uh, look, I love, I love Joe Rogan. I love John Anik. I love DC. But when it comes time for me to talk, it's my turn to talk. I'm over here. I need to market myself. I need to blow myself up. I need to be, you know, I need to get in the spotlight. So when I got up on that mic, I, I've been sitting there. The fans have always battled us. The, the media has always battled us. If they don't like something, they won't talk about it. If they like something, they'll talk negative about it. It's like, you know what? Let me hear it. Let's hear you guys get loud. I want to I wanna see us get trending. We're the number one. Uh, sport to come back for the COVID pandemic. We've been pushing stuff every week. We're always there for you guys, no matter what. Rain, sleet, or snow. We're like the mailman of the UFC, or the UFC is like the mailman of, of sports. We're always there for you guys, giving you entertainment when you're, you know, when you, you need something to look at. And that's why I wanted everyone to get up on Twitter. I wanted to hit the hashtags. I wanted to do trending on Twitter because that we deserve that. You know, we give it all of our stuff on the line. Like, look, look at Maki. Maki gave his whole entire just past few months dedicated to this fight, showed up as an amazing fighter, and yet oh, no one's talking about it. You know what I mean? That's how MMA works is that all these fans and everything kind of just stop talking about it when the next event happens and this, that, and the other. It's like, no, it's not, it's not how it should be. Let's finish but, up with this. I know you got a practice coming up, and uh, I think you said something about a speech, which I love, by the way, if that's some sort of a tradition with the gym. So we'll let you get to that in a second. But closing, of course, the big news. 
Uh, Miley Cyrus, you gave a shout out to, and you got a response from. So you gonna show us? Did you shave uh, an MC in the chest yet? Or are you gonna grow it out so it looks better? What's going on here? I have not shaven an MC in my chest just yet. I, I what are you waiting for? Yesterday. I flew home yesterday and I spent time with my family. Um, you know, it's been 31 months. I've spent all, you know, two camps worth away from my family, like kind of like pushing away. Spent majority of the time with my grandma, who I love. But this is the thing: uh, uh, a chest is sacred. A man's ch uh, has chest hair is sacred. It's like a lion's mane. Very <laughs> difficult to ch uh, to shave. But I am talking to some people right now, and we have something in the works for everybody. Trust me, everything is going to work out the way you guys want it to work out. Everything is going exactly how it should go. And for everyone saying that I blew it, I think that's hilarious because that's not what it looks like on this side. Wow. All right. All right. But just to be clear, I appreciate the family time, but on that three-hour flight back to KC, I think if you would have told that story to the guy or gal sitting next to you, Hey, will you shave my chest? You know, we got three hours here to kill because Mighty Cyrus will be my Valentine. I think that person would have done it. So, you know, but 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 hey, if you got you got plans and something's cooking, good for you because you're the man right now. That's all I got to say. I want to get your I want to get your rookie card like a bit like uh like in baseball. You know, I want to put it in my wall. That's my guy right there. Yo, Tops needs to holler at me so we can get some rookie cards <laughs> going because they didn't even talk to me. You know, like. It's funny, dude, is I did this whole entire thing. I did all this because, like, I've been working with this brand called Ballsy. It's like a, a male product, like, a male and female product that has, like, shaving and hair and conditioner, shampoo and stuff. But we always do Ballsy things. Like, you, you've seen my Instagram. I, you know, took a shower in a fountain in the middle of Las Vegas. I uh, skated down Las Vegas Boulevard in my underwear. And it's just Ballsy. And it's like, what's a Ballsy move that I could do? And I was like, oh, you don't be ballsy. Let's call out Miley Cyrus and let's see if she'll be my Valentine's. And it worked. That's wild. I'm a meme, bro. I'm a meme now. <laughs> Two months ago, it. three months ago, I wasn't talked about. And now I'm a meme, a trending meme. Let's go. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Congrats. Seriously. Tell the boys at Gloria MMA we said hello and uh, enjoy the fruits of your victory. And hopefully we get to see you. Uh, soon by the way the body held up good you feeling 100 yeah i feel amazing i feel on top of the world like i have no scratch i mean uh, maybe a little bit of scratches no it's already oh there we go we got a bruise where's it right? we got a bruise right there no everything's good body's feeling great first time i've ever not taken that much damage even though it looked like i took a lot of damage but right on nah, all right julian thank you so much for the time this morning and uh we'll talk to you soon all right bud Thank you, brother. Appreciate you guys. All right. We'll see you.